there is the prophetic dimension of wealth you may not learn this in a business seminar but it is true there is an advantage that we have in this kingdom we are not helpless there is the prophetic dimension of wealth we're about to pray this is very important in second chronicles chapter 20 when you read from verse 20 to 25 the story of jehoshaphat and judah when they were attacked by three nations that came in unity to fight them second chronicles chapter 20 we we'll begin to read from verse 20 please let's hurry up for time the bible says and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of tekoa pay attention now and as they went forth jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah koinonia god is speaking and ye inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall ye prosper not just believe the business you are doing not just believe that your mind is transformed there is an advantage that i build in my economy for the saints in light are we together by the time you read down to 25 the people began to kill themselves and then all they came and they saw dead bodies there and the bible says jehoshaphat and the people they could not take the spoils away why will people carry gold to war because god wanted to use a prophetic dimension and give it to his people believers hear me the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness it's a system of advantage incorporated in god's economy to prove to creation that there is a god that backs the saints are we together Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, very quickly. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Egypt is a place of captivity. And by a prophet was he preserved. In 2 Kings chapter 7 from verse 1, just write it down. You don't have, we are not, we don't have the time to read it. Elisha said, this was a famine in, fam in Samaria. I'm showing you how territories were restored through the prophetic. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. This is prophecy. When there was famine, the economists were still there. When there was famine, the business people were still there. Can I tell you, there are times when your fishing will not bring fish. It is not that your net is not good. It is not that your skill is not good. It is that there are powers that can stop the fish from coming there. At that time, you don't just need business acumen. You need a prophetic advantage. Are we together? In Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, let's read that very quickly from verse 1. And it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Uh -huh, and he saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. What were they washing? So they were valuable. They had boats. They had nets. They were productive. Are we together now? Oh, there are times they were responsible and transformed enough to go for fishing. There are times that mental transformation can be limited. There are times that your value can be limited. There are times that your skill, you are as productive as you can. But because we live in a realm that is spiritual, you will need Jesus. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of them. Now, when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, I show you the prophetic dimension of wealth. Launch out into the deep. I don't care what it is that you have done. I know your economic principles say it is until December. It says in, in two months you cannot be blessed. But this one, I respect your net. I respect your boat. I respect your transformation. But I am Jesus. Launch out into the deep. 
and let down your net for a drought. Hallelujah. Here's what Simon said. Master, we have toiled all night. We are not lazy. We are valuable. We are productive. We've been doing this for a long time. But the pandemic just came. And all our skills and the company, the company is still in place, but there is no profit. He said, nevertheless, Oh, there is a nevertheless in a believer's equation. Are you hearing me? In a believer's equation, it is not one plus one that is two. Economically speaking, one plus one is two. But there are times demons can change that two into zero. So you are doing one plus one, but your answer is not becoming two. And Jesus says, step out now. This is not economy. This is the prophetic. If you don't understand this dimension, your wisdom will be limited. This is where... The fallacy of people ignoring God comes in. Ignoring the prophetic ministry. After 10 years of excelling, they will plunge down. Signed, Satan. And Simon answering said, Master, we have toiled all night. We have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. What happened? Verse 6. When they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. They had never caught this kind of miracle. Let me tell you what the prophetic can do. I believe in investments where you can be patient for 10, 20 years and God will lift you. I believe you can buy, build houses and then be paying the rent, break even after three, five years. But believers, we are not alone in this journey. There is the prophetic dimension that can push a man overnight. I repeat, it is not a license for laziness. That is why I taught you these other laws before introducing this dimension. The mistake with we men of God in the body of Christ is that we ignore all of this and we just tell people there is a prophetic dimension and there is. So as they receive, they become lazy. They refuse to contend for transformation. They refuse to contend to be valuable. They refuse to be productive. They refuse to master relationships. They refuse to invest. Why? Because they know that at any time, I can come. But hear me. God did not bring you tonight just to learn economics. This is the house of God. Mysteriously, mysteriously, this house sustains the power of God to change lives and to transform even people's finances by the power of the prophetic. I am a product of these principles alongside the prophetic ministry. When the prophetic ministry is administered out of disalignment to scripture, it will destroy, it will produce imbalances. But when the prophetic ministry is administered within the boundary of scripture, and then balanced by these principles, it can work wonders in a man's life. There is something called prepared blessings in this kingdom. Where Joseph can be sitting down and God can make Pharaoh. Joseph, you can interpret dreams, but your value cannot make Pharaoh call you. It takes an agency from heaven to make Pharaoh want to see you. I took my time to pray over the things that I'm about to declare. Let me wrap up tonight before we pray. Let me define for you what is the power to get wealth based on everything I've said. What then is the power to get wealth? Never forget this definition. Two definitions I will give you. Number one, the power to get wealth is an engracing by the Holy Spirit upon an individual, upon an organization, an engracing by the Holy Spirit, upon an individual, upon an organization, that number one, attracts to the life of that individual, people, opportunities, and resources. We're, we're defining the power to get wealth. An engracing, from the Holy Spirit that can come upon the life of an individual and it works like a magnet attracting to your life people the ministry of men attracting to your life opportunities attracting to your life resources 
Number two, the power to get wealth is an empowerment upon an individual or an organization to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men. To provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men. Leading to all kinds of rewards. Principally financial rewards. An empowerment upon an individual. An empowerment upon a family. An empowerment upon a business. An empowerment upon an organization, a ministry. To provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men comma leading to all kinds of results honor influence principally financial rewards this is the power to get wealth so when the bible says god gives men the power to get wealth he places a grace upon their lives that can attract to their space people resources and opportunities and then he engraces the people to provide extraordinary solutions that will lead to all kinds of results, rewards, even financial rewards. I have an assignment as we wrap up this series. It's our first financial series officially in this ministry. It won't be the last. There are many other dimensions to cover. By the grace of God, I'm committed to communicating the whole counsel of God. But hear me. Truly, I tell you, there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. I have worked in keeping with the laws of transformation. I have worked in keeping with the laws of value, the laws of productivity, and all the other laws. But many instances in my life, I've had the honor and the privilege to receive a prophetic push. And I can tell you the wonder that this did in my life. We are wrapping up. This is a very sensitive moment. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 41, you want the prophetic to work for you, you have to know how the prophetic works. It says, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. I don't have the time to begin to tell you different experiences in my life and in this ministry where God granted the grace to provoke the prophetic. And when the prophetic came, it took us to different levels of the blessings of the Lord. Can I tell you believers? I know that many people have suffered manipulation from men of God, imbalances from men of God, but I love you too much and I fear God too much to not teach you the truth. These truths you have learned, the spiritual laws and part of these physical laws are irrefutable. But the prophetic advantage comes into the life of a believer. Listen carefully. To be able to lift you and to bless you there are two keys that provoke the operation of the prophetic please write it down and never forget the prophetic does not just work arbitrarily there are two keys that activate the operation of the prophetic number one honor honor to god and honor to the prophetic vessel that will speak over your life. You cannot dishonor God and dishonor his mouthpiece and prosper by the anointing that comes from that mouthpiece. Now, sometimes men of God use this sadly to bully people into, you know, just trying to manipulate people for respect. That may be wrong, but I'm telling you, when you dishonor God and you dishonor his anointed, you will never truly be able to receive. Number two, the second way you provoke the prophetic to work for you is through the power of sacrifice. Psalm 50 verse 5, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. 
You can't imagine how I've struggled to come and teach this prophetic dimension. But because I cannot, my mind, I will not even be able to sleep knowing that I did not open you up to this dimension. Behind the mysterious prosperity you see of men and women, whether in the kingdom or even in the secular, accelerated wealth that just came into people, there was a prophetic push and it came at the instance of honor and at the instance of a sacrifice. I'm going to be speaking over your life. I'm going to be declaring over you. But let me tell you this. For the first time in Koinonia, I'm going to be challenging you tonight to stand in partnership with the Lord and agree with God what sacrifice that you are going to give with understanding to break out of any financial circle of limitation and retrogression, years of, of poverty and yokes of darkness. Listen, if you don't believe what I'm teaching and what I'm saying, please do not do it. Just listen to what I'm telling you. You are absolutely at liberty to ignore what I'm telling you. But if it is the kingdom and it is prosperity you desire, whether you are following online or listening to me, there are companies, there are families, there are individuals. Like Peter, you have tried all night. The truth is that you have taken out time to transform yourself. You have bought books. You've gone to school. You've had seminars. There are others who have, you are valuable. Others, you are productive. You've done your best. But there are times when your net may not catch any fish. There are times when your boat can take you to the river, but the net will not catch any fish. At that point, you need the prophetic. When the pandemic came, people lost money. People lost businesses. Hear me. If I stand here as a man of God to lie to you, to manipulate you, may a curse be upon me forever for the rest of my life. I fear God too much and God has shown us too much mercy to stand here and face you inside, outside, all the overflows and the thousands and potentially millions of people across the globe following. I fear God too much to do that. But also, I love you too much to look beyond my reputation and teach you the truth. There are times that I have taken certain steps of faith. I cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that I've laid down at the altar that has made God to vow certain vows in my life. It was in Port Harcourt in one of the occasions I went for a convention. I was outside just like Koinonia and the man of God came and preached. I sat down, didn't have much, there was nothing. And he challenged people just like this. And I believed him. I went back home that night. God is my witness. I gathered my whole bag and everything, my rechargeable. I zipped everything. I prayed in tongues, laying my hands on it for three hours nonstop. By the next day, I dragged that bag. That was everything I had. I stayed outside. When people were dropping seeds and dropping whatever, others were giving landed properties, other people were giving whatever it is. I just stood back there and the Holy Spirit now said I should wait. When everybody had finished giving, he said I can walk to the altar. I dragged my bag and I knew this was Isaac. I went and I dragged that bag like a madman. People were looking at me. There is a way you really want to get out of certain circles. Please help those under the anointing. There, there is a way. Please hear me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. Some of you, your being here tonight is the prayer and fasting of mama for 10 years. I did not go to school, but oh God, can you raise somebody from this family that in my lifetime let us taste of the blessing of the Lord before I go to my grave. God wants to give you an opportunity. I'm not calling you out. I'm not calling anybody out. But can I tell you this? I'm about to pray for you. The truth is that the prophetic truly, truly, when it has to do with ending circles, it will take a sacrifice. When God wanted many sons, he took his own son as a sacrifice and buried him in the ground. He that weepeth, 
bearing precious seeds shall doubtless return rejoicing bringing in the sheaves can i tell you this i'm not supposed to say it, but i will tell you while i was preparing the moment the lord put it in my heart to teach on this prophetic dimension god gave me an instruction myself on what to sow because i have to believe in this message too if i don't believe it i'm a hypocrite i don't leave off what people do and bring i leave off my own obedience when god told me what to sow i had to say wow and i did it immediately before coming and even at that i made sure that i packaged my own seed to come and that one is between me and god this one now is apostle preaching to everybody including me so don't think it's something that we're just talking i believe in what i'm doing can i tell you this for some of you you have been praying and saying lord how long i am tired of this circle for others you need to go and contend for transformation others you need to work on your value others you need to work on productivity others you need to work on all the spiritual laws but in addition to that god is giving us an opportunity tonight to end circles when i drop that seed and i return back i remember the holy ghost spoke to me outside and said from this day you have entered wealth i didn't understand what that meant listen carefully god is my witness by the next day 6 10 in the morning someone calls me shaking under the anointing who is this are you so 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 and so i said yes he said send me your account number i just thought immediately these are all these scammers who just want he said no 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 i woke up this morning with an instruction that i should do a transfer to your account i said what is this i had a release in my spirit i took the risk I was surprised to see what the person sent i said what in the world is this god now connected me to somebody and the rest is history god began to lift and to show himself faithful somebody who loved me so much you will think that i i don't know if i cough that man will buy me a pharmacy not a drug i started watching these things happen only a fool leaves what works. I held on to that truth and I said, this must work. I remember one time in this ministry when we started, the Lord gave an instruction to, do, to empty the entire account. I stand by the God of heaven and I tell you the truth. That's an economic risk. There are times when under divine instruction, both bread and seed can go. You can cast your bread upon the waters. And after many days, he says, you will find it. In one week, seven days, what God did for this ministry, this dear vision he has so honored, till Jesus comes, we will not recover from it. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. Many of you are already practitioners of this truth. Some of you are practitioners of it, but by manipulation. Some of you are doing it, but it, it, there was no light and revelation. Can I tell you this? I'm about to pray for you. Our time is up. You are going to agree with God right now. As a family, as a business, as an individual. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. What seed? It is, I'm not, there's no amount we are not mentioning anything. I'm not calling anybody out everyone should participate your children whoever if it's a seed that you want to give here ushers i don't know how they would, how you do it maybe the account details will be given if it's something you want to copy the account details and so but brothers and sisters i want to pray for you the prophetic to bring people out of seasons of 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 shame and reproach it is with sacrifice a sacrifice is not an offering no if a sacrifice does not touch you, it will not touch God. I want you to stand. Oh, my lifting has come.